Wonder Woman is actually Princess Diana of Themyscira. Her alter ego in our world is Diana Prince. Wonder Woman is one of the most powerful heroes. She possesses super strength, speed, agility, reflexes, senses, stamina and endurance. And since 1960, she's had the power of flight. She's also a superior hand-to-hand -hand combatant, has a superior healing factor, she's ageless and has eternal life, and her magical weaponry includes indestructible bracelets, the lasso of truth, a weaponized tiara, and the magical sword. In the mid-70s, she made a successful appearance in a Wonder Woman TV series where she was played by Linda Carter. It's been confirmed she'll be making an appearance in the 2016 movie Batman vs Superman. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of my collectibles collection. This is Wonder Woman. It's a Kotobiaki Bisojo statue and it's actually the latest release in the DC range. There's only been one this year so far. This is the second time Wonder Woman's made an appearance in the series. I do have the other figure. The other figure was a very early release and I will feature that later in the series. This is uh, Wonder Woman in her battle dress as it's described and um, it has a interchangeable hand. The hand where the dagger is actually completely detaches from the figure and can be uh, replaced by their empty hand. So um, one woman's in a classic um, cross like a cross, cross wrist position there and uh, that's what she regularly does to block gunshots or projectiles with her indestructible bracelets. Now um, the figure is one seven scale as per most of the Kotobayaki Bisojo statues, and I believe the pose she's actually in is um, actually uh, where well, she's actually levitating, hence uh, why she's only on one leg. Anyway, let's get hands on with the figure. Now, um, you see straight away there's quite a lot of detail going on in the actual uh, main body of the outfit there, in the in the corset that she wears, and. Um, usual Bisojo style hairstyle as well with the ends of the hair getting a bit more translucent and uh, you can see the detail of the, the face there and um, the tiara which you can take off and use as a projectile as well and she regularly throws that at enemies to incapacitate them it's got the Wonder Woman star as you can see on the corset it's got the classic Wonder Woman logo the W like is like part like forms of part of the wings and as you move down the figure there you have the um, usual belt that she wears and also the lasso of truth um, on, her, on her belt there. Um, now like I say this is the battle dress this so she's actually wearing a um, star spangled blue skirt there and also some armoured armored boots which have quite a bit of detail they have uh, knee guards right at the top there and they've got various uh, buckles which the boots obviously fasten up with. Uh, the base is a plain blue base. The base is what really lets this figure down. I'm always a big believer in a base should be part of the figure. They could have done some kind of clouds on the base, as they've done on one of the other figures who's actually in flight. But uh, if we just rotate the figure around there, see uh, going back up the figure again, she's even got star spangled pants. <laughs> and we've got a, a nice flowing cape which again gives the illusion that she is actually levitating I don't think she's actually high up but she is actually levitating and um, you can see behind the cape there's also a bit of detail as well even though you can't really see behind the cape that very, very well there is still a lot of detail there in the creases of the um, outfit and the corset itself Again, you can see the definition in the legs there, especially around the knee area there. She's not as defined as some of the other figures in the uh, Kotobiaki range, as you've seen previously. But there is um, definition there on the legs and the arms, it's, uh, the arms especially, which uh, do have a bit of um, shade and effect to the actual figure there. Um, they have gone for a very pale, pale skin on her, which is a bit unusual because she's um, not usually depicted in that paler fashion. But um, it does work. I think it brings out the colours of the uniform an awful lot better and provides a really good contrast. Uh, we get a good shot there of the lasso of truth there, and again her star spangled, star spangled skirt. And again the other side of the boots there. You can see the knee, the knee protector, and again the buckles on her battle boots. Now again, if we have a look at the close-up of the uh, the main corset of the figure, there you've got, like I say, you've got the classic um, Wonder Woman logo across the chest area, 
and um, again a traditional belt that she does generally wear in all the uniforms you can see the indestructible bracelets there and there's a dagger um, I, I, think, I don't think that's the magical sword that she carries because it's more of a dagger that is but I may be wrong there um, I can't quite find a picture of the actual sword itself uh, now here's the base like I say this is the one thing that does let the figure down a bit it's the plain base and it just fastens in with this um, like raised platform boot it just slots in there and uh, again I'm trying to show here the detail behind the cape and uh, the camera can't get in there very well but um, yeah it's, it is really detailed even though you can't really see it and here's a few still shots of the actual figure as well in various different poses where you can see the detail on the costume and again the definition of the actual character itself and the, and the boots from the pose that she's in, I mean, it looks like she's like casually blocking uh, some projectile towards her with a defiant look on her face, and um, I think it's a really, really good figure. I do prefer the other Wonder Woman figure, which I will feature later in the series for you guys. Anyway, that was Wonder Woman. Thanks for watching.